Welcome back, everybody, to another podcast. Today, I am joined with my burger brother, the master of Smash himself, John Battersby. How you doing, John? I'm, uh, you know, I may be the master of Smash, but you're definitely the burger god. So, uh, Look, hey, man, I tell you what, I still think we get together. We can make some burger magic happen. I, I'll uh, guarantee it. Uh, arteries. <laughs> <laughs> I know my cholesterol goes up ten points just thinking about it. I ain't lying. <laughs> between the between the sautéed onions, the crispy bacon, and the burgers, look, <laughs> I know there's gonna be a fried egg in there. Well, yeah, I ain't even got to the cheese aspect of it yet. <laughs> so you know, and uh, it is nice to finally get a chance to talk to you. We always talk in the comments and Likewise. stuff like that. Fantastic. It It is. Um, for anybody who don't know, John's been around Food Tribe for, oh my God, you've been around a while now. You're like the rest of us. You're one of the seasoned veterans, I guess you could say. How long have you been on, do you know? Uh, pretty close to the beginning, if I remember correctly. Yeah, since it was kind of a, a new thing shortly after. I was like, you know, food? From the from the car guys, heck yeah, count me in. Exactly. Now, was you on Drive Tribe before you came to Food Tribe? A little bit. I didn't get too deep into it. Um, I've got a Mustang, which attracted me over there to the the Drive Tribe side, and yeah, uh, it's so big, and my little piece of it was so small. I, I just couldn't get any traction over there. <laughs> I get that completely. Uh, that's what happened to me. I started Drive Tribe the day it got launched, and I I was all about it. And as it grew, um, well, I wasn't big into social media, and so I really didn't even understand how it worked. I just read the articles, and I loved the whole rate my ride and stuff like that. And I spent a lot of time there. And then, yeah, then my footprint on Drive Tribe was. <laughs> yeah same here plus uh, the, the 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 economy of the scale of it i can afford a new gas grill i can't afford a new ferrari <laughs> mm -mm. no i understand my man and the gas grill gets iffy i'm, I'm lucky to find firewood here recently <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, oh um no i i get it and i've said it a billion times is I loved, I still love Drive Tribe. I do a podcast for Drive Tribe. I occasionally still write for Drive Tribe. I post spots for Drive Tribe, but it ain't the atmosphere of Food Tribe. It, yeah. The people are different. Everything's different. And I also understand what you say. Once you get to an establishment, like even, you know, where we're at on Food Tribe, when you go over to Drive Tribe, it's like starting over. It, oh, yeah. In a bigger world. Yeah, and I, I have referenced it to, uh, it's like being dropped in the ocean compared to Food Tribe. Yes. Uh, you just get dropped in and either you, you swim to shore or you get ate by the sharks, one or the other. It's <laughs> um, it, I, I still love it. I still spend time over there, obviously, but I mean, nothing compared to Food Tribe. Once I started here, that took all my time. Oh yeah. Like I said, I don't even remember you had to you've had to been there since short of day one because I don't not remember you on food drive. So Yeah, I remember seeing a, a article on Grand Tour about food driving is coming and mm -hmm. I got excited. Uh I hope I hope my boss doesn't see this. I think I was at work that day and I, <laughs> I went and got some uh better internet and got on it pretty quick. Mm hmm. Well, that's that's what happened to me. I was, of course, being on Drive Tribe, I had got hints and, and uh, I guess you could say that they were they were working on this food drive. And I found out one day that food tribe had finally launched and it was the launch day for it. I went to check it out from there and it was like. Well, I've said I didn't plan on being on it. I just wanted to see what it was like. And uh, yeah, here I am. So, darn the uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. So, 
I, I yeah, had no idea. Like I said, didn't intend on being around. Um, I was just gonna go back to Drive Tribe and actually start something there. So that's cool. Yeah. So what what got you to stay at Food Tribe? What what made you stick around? So I actually started a food blog about a year before Food Tribe started up. Okay. And I found out that blogging, unless you you know write the stuff that's twenty pages long, where they can insert an ad in every you know three words, you're not going to get anywhere with it. And and the funny thing is, I was spending a couple hundred dollars a year on it, and I was getting excited because I was like, oh, I got three views on this article. You know, and it was cool because there were international views. And then I saw Food Tribe come along, and I was like, I could do the same thing and not pay a whole bunch of money. Yeah. So, kind of, you know, share my passion, but it was even better because it was like a food blog with other people who shared your passion. So, Food Tribe, I mean, that's, that's why this is the place. Yeah, it is. Um, I I don't know how people do it. Uh, I try to keep up with, well, I got two podcasts I'm doing for YouTube. This one and one I'm doing with Leela. I'm trying to, I, I barely do anything on Drive Tribe. Then I'm trying to keep up with Food Tribe. And it's like, how are you, the rest of y'all doing this plus blogs? And then you have Instagram and your Facebook, and some of them have their own websites. I'm like, how? Oh yeah, and I've got my car buddies with their Instagram sites, and they're, you know, they're (laughs) they're hitting it every day, twice, three times, four times a day, getting the views, selling selling pictures basically to the to the world. And it's like, how do you have time for this? I know it, right? Um, I just, well, in fact, I'm. I'm trying to upload a uh, video now, uh, a vlog video from where we was on a trip, and I'm already pondering possibly doing jumping into another endeavor on YouTube. And I'm like, do I really have time for this? I mean, <laughs> really have time for this? And it, there again, it's something more fun that I, I actually really enjoy doing. And to me, that would be nice. But at the same time, I'm like, Look, I just took, what, three or four days off from just food. Well, the Internet as a rule, just cut it all out. Because I do believe sometimes you just got to close that laptop, put that phone down and walk away, you know, and remember that. Yeah, remember that there's a great big world out there to go explore. And uh, but then I got back and realized how far behind I was. I was like, oh, no, you know, (laughs) now I got to play catch up. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, that's why I don't like taking time off. But, yeah, it, you sometimes you have to. Yeah. Uh, so you're down in Georgia. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to tell anybody about no, yourself? I'm originally, I'm originally from New Jersey. Um, I ended up down here on a lark. Um, I ended up down in Alabama for college. And after five years of that, uh, not because I was a slow learner. I, I just had a lot of fun. Um, I ended up in Georgia. Um, a friend of mine actually talked me into applying to the police department he worked at. So mm-hmm. 15 years ago, I dropped an application, got hired. Actually, it's almost 16 years ago now. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. Met my wife down here. Um, we're pretty well established in the area, and we love our we love the area. There's a lot of a lot of culture going on around here a lot of younger folks and yeah georgia is not what a lot of folks think it is um i yeah coming from jersey i was like i I could never have pictured myself settling in the deep south ah yeah well you know the thing of it is is i know you you've done some traveling in your days and been a few places but to, to pick you as a jersey boy i honestly wouldn't have chose it because you do seem like a Georgia is just almost native to you after oh. talking to you over the time. And I've yeah. known people from, from Georgia that grew up Georgia, you know, and stuff. And I lived in Georgia for a short time. I would have guessed that's just where you sort of born and raised talking to you. I'll tell you, it's a better fit for me. Yeah. I'm not going to be back to New Jersey anytime soon. Although I do miss the food. <laughs> you, you, could, you couldn't get me to go there. 
I, I'm serious. I, you couldn't pay me. First of all, I'd have to get through New York, and that's just communist territory to me. I can't. I can't. So. <laughs> Not a big fan of New York, but I tell you, the last time I was in Long Island, I looked at all the restaurants we were driving by. And I was like, I could spend a week here and just murder it, just eat everywhere. Yeah, I, I, I would love to visit a lot of the restaurants and the boroughs for their food. I have seen some. I would love to go to Cat's Deli. I ain't lying. Just, I could spend some money in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that means going to New York City, and I, I ain't built for that. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not so much a city person anymore. So, rural Georgia is, is pretty comfortable. Yeah, I, I, I'm small. I'm very small town USA. You know what I mean. Uh, at times, I even question the city I live in is too big for me. It's like, oh, need something smaller. <laughs> I think you like it here. To, uh, get yourself a big plot of acreage on a mountain and pretty much have a whole mountain to yourself. Yeah, I tell you what, I, I did love that when I was down there because I was smack dead between, well, you know where Ackworth is. So, yeah. okay, well, you're smack dead between, was it Red Top Mountain and Stone Mountain? Yeah. And, I loved it because I was only, what, less than an hour from either one. And it was like, oh, man, I could go out there and sit on the side of some of them lakes and just watch the water in the mountains, man, and watch nature go by. And I was perfectly happy. Yep. <laughs> Give me a fishing pole and it had been even better. I'll have lunch in a minute. <laughs> yeah, it took me three years to catch my first fish in the damn lake. So. <laughs> Are you serious? Wow. I didn't put much effort into it. I just like standing out there. Yeah. One of them ones that probably just rather just sit on the bank, drink a beer, and watch nature go by. Exactly. <laughs> I had friends like that. They'd say, hey, we're going fishing. And yeah, now they just going to sit on the bank and drink beer more. And it was <laughs> yeah. whole night. A whole night, the pole never hit the water. It's like, oh, I thought you guys were coming out here to go fishing, you know. Can't do that in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, see, that's that's one of the things that, well, there's other reasons I don't, anyway. But that's the other thing, you know, I, I grew up fishing, hunting, the whole bit. You take that away from me, you might as well just, life's rough at that point, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm as happy sitting on a bank with a fishing pole as I am sitting in a tree with a gun. I, I, I probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> sitting in a tree with a freedom stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting for dinner to walk by. Um, That's just me. That's how I grew up. Small town. Um, pick up trucks. Off-roading. Thinking of that. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about you building this overlanding truck. You're building a truck for people who don't know that is basically a mobile kitchen more than it is anything. Yeah, yeah. So growing up in New Jersey, I didn't have the opportunity to go out four wheeling, to go out hunting, to go out fishing that much. Um, so I and I grew up reading Four Wheel Magazine uh, from Peterson Publishing and. Uh, watching the videos of Paris to Dakar and the Camel Trophy Cup stuff. And I was like, hey, I want to do that. I want to go have that adventure. Um, but I lived in the middle of the big asphalt jungle. So uh, all these years later, I can afford to buy a pickup truck. So uh, I like to eat and I like to drive. And now I can do both. And <laughs> go take advantage of those, those beautiful places in Georgia. I can drive out to the lake and set up a camp and set up my mobile kitchen or I could go up into the mountains and do the same thing and it it's pretty cool especially when you get out there with like-minded people and you can share that with them and then you get jealous of what they're cooking <laughs> so yeah it, it's it's pretty cool I'm having a good time with it yeah I know I know that is quite the rig you got going on you got refrigerators and fold out tables and grills and when when we go, it's um, it's just a truck. Uh, 
<laughs> we might have the igloo in the back, you know what I mean, with some food in it. And then when we get there, it's uh, I make a makeshift fire pit on the ground real fast. I collect sticks, chunks of wood, make a fire. We might no, have make, a cast iron skillet for this. Well, yeah, I, I I I think I've just done it so long that I do. That's just my my wiring now. We used to camp with some friends who had a giant motorhome, and I always made fun of them. I'm like, well, it's not hard to go camping when you bring a single wide trailer with you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of those. And, you know, he got up in the morning, he had his electric coffee pot, and, you know, he had his his uh, stove, and he had a little oven. He had all that running water, the whole bit. Here I am going down to the creek to get, you know, water, and had the percolator full of coffee sitting in the coals of the fire. And, you know, I got flame on this side and coals over here so I can regulate heat. And then, you know, I got cast iron skillet with like eggs and bacon cooking he's over there on his stove trying to cook you know and it, <laughs> it <doesn't laughs> very out of <laughs> yeah and he just looked at me he was like well i'll fix breakfast if you want oh, now nah, i got this you know and um and it was always funny because me and the wife would be over there and she's she, you know she'd cook on a fire just as easy and we'd be over there we'd have skillets and uh the cages, you know what I mean, where you put your burgers or your meat or whatever in and, and you fold them up. We'd have like one of those in, in our skillet and we'd have different things and just laid out on the fire. And of course, you know, we got rocks and logs and stuff to prop everything on and, and do it. And next thing you know, here he'd come over and, you know, what do what you guys got over here? It smells awful good, you know. <laughs> Man, it's fine, you know. Yeah, so, but the ultimate goal is uh, I want to get out to Utah. I want to get out to Colorado, uh, Montana. Um, I think coming from New Jersey to the life I live now where I've got the mountains and the lakes close by, it's kind of let my appetite to, to maybe see what else is out there and uh, see if, if I can have a week or two week long adventure where I'm relying solely what's packed in the back of a five foot bed on a Ford Ranger. That sounds like an excellent week for me. I would I would be all about that. <laughs> and what I you know if I if I ended up running out of something there's always gas station nachos. So <laughs> Yeah they they might kill you quicker than the trail will but you know <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> But yeah, I bet coming from someplace like Jersey, going down to to Georgia was short of culture shock. It, oh, it was it was eye opening. Um, <laughs> but when they, you get treated politely at a restaurant, you look at the waitress or the waiter, and you're like, "What's your problem?" <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Those, and yeah, there is there is something to be said about that. Um, the slang difference, the the pure slang difference of. Probably Jersey and George is completely different. Yeah, um, you know, meeting meeting Southern friends. You know, why you talk so fast? And I don't talk anywhere near as fast as I used to. Kind of slowed down and enjoy the conversation these days. But yeah, big difference. Big difference in how conversation happens. Yeah, it it, it was. I remember. Um, even being from Southern Ohio that, you know, I, I have a tendency to talk fast. Even people in Ohio will tell me, you know, why are you always talking so fast? And I'm like, well, it's just, it's just me. Well, I went down to Georgia and it was like, people just looked at me like, why are you in such a hurry all the time? Exactly. <laughs> Didn't realize it was. <laughs> but between that, just the, the environment shock, I mean, you know, like you said, you went from an asphalt jungle to Georgia where, I mean, I guess if you go down to Atlanta, you can get lost in that, that jungle down there real quick. So, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I don't. Let me tell you, dude, there is some terrifying times in my life. One of the which is when this small boy, small town USA boy went to Washington, D.C. Oh. I, I was almost paralyzed with just, nope. You know, <laughs> just nope. <laughs> and you immediately feel like I don't belong here. You know, you yeah. just something to your spine tells you, nope, you don't belong here. I got off a Greyhound bus in the middle of the night in Atlanta, Georgia. Ooh. 
Yeah, and before the bus driver opened the doors to the bus, he warned us of all the homeless people that was going to greet us at the bus. And he said, make sure you keep all your stuff close to you. And he was telling us how to, you know, make sure all your stuff's shut down and zipped up, locked up, whatever, and hug it close to you because they'll just take it from you. And he said, whatever you do, don't give them anything. Because once you give them money or anything, he said, it's on. He said, they'll just mob you. And man, look, he opened them bus doors. No joke, people. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it was like night of the living dead. I'm not kidding you. All you seen was homeless between the bus and the bus station. And you thought, just shut the doors, dude. I'm staying on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people. <laughs> oh my gosh! And there was no such thing as you know personal bubble. I mean, they they ain't afraid to put hands on you. They aren't afraid to you know get in your face. And it was one of the first times I realized that if you didn't give them something, they weren't afraid to get angry about it. You know, they would ask you for like a dollar, and if you said no, nah, man, and you just tried to push your way through the crowd, they're ready to fight you. I mean, fight you. And it was like, dude, um, I'm just trying to get to a bus station, my boy. Uh, leave me alone, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was a stressful night, man. And then we had to get, that's with the gang violence down there is just. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of young folk just running mm -hmm. kind of crazy and stuff. But uh, yeah, on the other side of it, I mean, there's a lot of culture in this area, too, which is kind of yeah. neat. Um, you know, the first time I ever ate Indian food was around here in Atlanta, um, uh, Haitian food, Jamaican food, uh, German. I mean, wow. there's, I, mean, I guess a lot of big cities have their little pockets of culture and it's here too. Uh, name it, you can get it. Good food, mm -hmm. Greek. I mean, just all kinds of good stuff. Mm. I always go back to the food. That's how I judge a, judge a country or a city. If I can sit down <laughs> and eat, be happy. Yeah, if they got good food, it, it can't be all bad. So that is one thing I don't necessarily like with where I'm at because we don't have anything. You know, my little town is full of mostly like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, junk. It, it literally just junk. You and, you posted about that burger place, though, and I was jealous. Oh, yeah, the little Carl's Townhouse. Oh, yeah. man. You know, the only salvation we got. I'm telling <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff, though. Yeah, and, and it's what we got. Um, I ain't going to lie, though. We went, when we was on our uh, our days away last week, uh, we come across. Now, this is in a separate little town from where we live, and it's not a whole lot. Actually, it might be a touch smaller than what we are. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway come across the little place that is a New York style, style deli. Oh. I've never been to New York deli at all. No idea. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to New York. So how would I know? Uh, come to find out, the dude, um, I've known a few people from New York, and once you know that accent, you don't forget it. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That's a strong accent, boy. Um he opened up the door and I talked to him for just a minute and I walked back in the truck and I was like, yeah, he's a New Yorker. I know that accent from anywhere. I said, if anybody knows how to do a deli, it's probably him. And I tell you what, I have had three subs from that place and they're all three amazing. My wife has had two and I finished both. I helped her finish both of those. And I said, that boy don't know how to make a bad sandwich. I'm telling you. Um, it's in his blood. Well, I tell you, it has to be because, oh my gosh, dude, and we're already, look, we've ate there. We When we got to where that town Thursday, we ate there that night. We went back Friday, was going to eat there again, but we got there too late. Went back Saturday, picked up food, brought it home just to eat it at home. And then my wife ran up last night after work to another town. To pick up food to come back home to have dinner. I mean, this stuff is amazingly good. Uh, I, need the, I need the address. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you come up to Ohio, boy, I'll take you up there. <laughs> um, and I had my first cannoli. I've never had a cannoli in my life. 
oh god i'm hooked dude that's the, see, that's good stuff from jersey i grew up with right and funny I, I got a jersey transplant that lives lives in my area that opened up a pizza joint and he's got all the good favorites the cannolis the pizza the pasta the chicken parmesan it's all all the good stuff the cheese steaks and hot wings and cheese fries oh, oh, I grew up with. yeah sounds like my kind of place <laughs> You I talk, give me a piece. You know, you're like you hear this guy's accent, you're like, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. Yep, <laughs> that's how this guy was. He come out, and I was like, I could about pick what borough you're from, I think. <laughs> and I've never even been to New York. It's like, dude, you sound a bit Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> I I went to school with some people from New York, and. So I spent some time around him and learned that accent. Like I said, as soon as I started talking to him, I'm like, nah, he's a New Yorker. He's a New Yorker. Uh, and like I said, them cannoli are to die for. Oh, I yeah. I told my wife as soon as we tried them, uh, Saturday was the first time we tried them. And I was hooked. I, I She ordered four of them. You got two, she got two small ones and two large ones. And I took a bite. I got the small one. I thought, well, I don't know what I'm eating, you know. So if I don't like it, I, I'm not out much. So I was going to eat one of the small ones. I devoured that thing immediately. I took a, a just a small little bite out of it. Man, I oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like I don't even know how to describe it. It is. It's a rich, vanilla, -y, almost cheesecakey kind of. And then that hard mm -hmm. you get that really soft inside mixed with that hard shell on the outside that touches sprinkled uh powdered sugar on <gasps> oh my god i'm hungry already anyway <laughs> i uh, slammed that little, yeah i slammed that little one down so quick that before i knew it i had to package open to the big one and chewing on that thing i was like oh my gosh so when she ran up last night to get more stuff i said well i want a sub and some cannoli i, I don't care I'm just i need a sub and cannoli she's like well you just want you know like a large one or what do you want no i said no i want a box of them i need a box of them <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I thought man i'm about running out of town just to grab a box of cannoli heck with the subs just give me the cannoli man i'm good <laughs> it's like Go for dinner tonight Yo, that's it. It's like, yeah, that's that's probably not healthy either. But you know what? They're daggone good. I know that. So, and it, you know, think of it is, I didn't even know what they were. I, no idea. So, yeah, I found out they're they're a sweet treat. I guess. So, I guess looking at it, it could be anything. Mhm. Mm what to expect? Yeah. Well, and that's the fun thing about trying new stuff. Um, I. You know, I've, I've always been adventurous and, and stuff in food, and I think it's a good thing because I know a lot of people who, if it's something new and they don't know what it is, they won't try it just because, well, I don't know what that is. Why would I want to try it? Yeah, no, I, I, I think uh, I'll draw the limit at things like bugs. Um, yeah. Fermented pickled fish, maybe, but other than yeah. that, man. It's, it's so fun, especially when you go out to try, you know, to somebody else's culture. And I mean, that's the best way to submerse yourself into it. Mm -hmm. Sit down and, and watch it go by as you eat their food. Yeah. And I, I do believe it'll tell you a lot of, you know, a lot about their culture, you know, when you get into their food. And that's one of the things I, I do love about Food Tribe is you get to learn about not only cultures, but their foods and, and, it does bring you in a little bit closer, you know, and yeah. find out the differences. And I don't know, it's just, it's so interesting. It's fun. It's very fun. And it has made me to where, like, now I want to go visit that country. I, it's, <laughs> I need to try that food firsthand by people who actually know how to make it, you know. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah, no, over here are we getting a good translation or a bad translation <laughs> well yeah exactly and well okay let's, let's let's take even the um the little shop i was just telling you about like i don't even know if that's a fair representation of what a true new york deli is all about but i tell you what it's really good <laughs> and you guys in new york and find the bread's totally different it could be 
even more amazing or, you mm-hmm. know, it could disappoint you. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, the pizza game. You know, you think, well, New York's just known for, you know, their some of their pizza game. And, and I would love to actually go try it because it, they have a reputation. Oh, yeah. But there again, it's like trying to get me to go to Chicago. It's probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably going to happen. <laughs> from new york and have it delivered to your house the next day oh wow now see that'd be all right i could get into that so. uh, uh, a website called gold belly that i like to, to surf around occasionally um because i've got i mean everything from everywhere i i look at the brisket from texas and it's like oh 120 dollars but i could have that brisket tomorrow oh so tempting <laughs> yeah see I didn't know about that one. I haven't heard about that. So, Gold Belly. Yeah. Huh. You can lose yourself searching the food in there. Oh, it sounds that way. I get in enough trouble with Crowd Cow, man. I ain't kidding you. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. Yeah. (laughs) I tell you what, though. I mean, these uh, these, uh, beats back in the day when I was in college, we were having a, a Super Bowl party in Alabama, and we actually drove a friend of ours to the airport to catch a flight up to New York, and he brought back hoagies and pizza. It was before 9 11. We got to get away carrying that stuff on the airplane. And it was cold when it got here, but it still tasted good. Oh, now that's dedication to the cause right there, boy. (laughs) Everyone chipped together what we could, and that worked for Delta, so he got a, a space available flight up there. And, man, we ate like kings that night. Wow. Now, that's a story right there. I, I ain't never been a part of nothing like that before. But, you know, I hey. Times. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But no, we, I ain't never. Yeah, that's different. So, <laughs> that's dedication to the cause. That, you know, and see, that shows something. When, you, when you're willing to travel, you know, halfway across the country and, and, in a hurry like that just to pick up food and come back oh, i yeah. think that's a real testament you know i mean to, to what the food is so, I, in retrospect i kind of feel bad for him because he had a long day oh i bet i bet so but you, you couldn't do that now you know there's no way so no. there again times are different times yeah. are different but then and, again it's almost as easy as going online and ordering it. Well, yeah, now you got like Uber Eats and all this other nonsense that'll bring you stuff. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not not into it. <laughs> something about going and, and, and eating at a restaurant and it, it's so much better. Yeah. Well, now, in that regard, that's where we are a little different because I have gotten to where I don't even care to go to restaurants anymore. I really don't. I mean, now, like, I'll go pick something up and bring it back home or something, but to go sit in an actual restaurant and eat, I I can't really do it anymore. Just, I don't know. So, about five years ago, I had an experience where I hadn't been to this Greek restaurant in a while, and I'll go in and... And I sit down to order it to go. And the guy's English was very bad. He, he kind of asked me, he's like, uh, you know, he's like, why, why you no know, eat? And I was yeah. like, ah, you know, it's just been a while. He said, no, 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 like right now, you stay here and eat. And I was like, okay, I will. I felt like I was a part of his family by the time that meal ended. Because uh, <laughs> uh, try this, try this. And then whatever I couldn't eat, I was like, ah, I'm going to just box that up for leftovers tomorrow I said, ah, no 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 all fresh all fresh i was like holy crap one of my no, favorite I, restaurants now. <laughs> that you know that is a cool place um me and my wife have experienced stuff like that uh honestly the probably the closest to that i was 17 years old and and we was uh, took a family trip it was me my mom and dad and my grandma and grandpa and a cousin of mine we went out to vegas and of course, being 17, you couldn't be in a worse place in the world than Las Vegas because you're. I was literally a couple months from turning eight, literally, just ruined the whole trip. Yeah. Anyway, 
<laughs> if I was 18, I'd have had too much fun. But being 17, you, you're limited. So anyway, uh, I was stuck in a casino hotel for most of the trip. And because my grandparents refused to stay in downtown, which if they would have done that would have opened up a lot more for me. Yeah. But we stuck up in the middle up there by the dam and at a little place called the Railroad Casino. And at that time, there was nothing around it but rock and sand. That that was it. And you had to go up on top of the hill and you could see downtown Vegas. So nowhere to go. Just absolutely. And I used to go down. I thought, well, man, I had gangs of money back in. I was working, had all kinds of money. And I'd go down to the uh, the restaurant side the hotel. And then people, I, I tell you what, I was give more food than I bought. I'd go down there and sit. And there was these waitresses that come in. I don't know if they felt bad for me or what. And they was like, you still here? Yeah, I don't want nothing else to do. And next thing I know, they just hand me food. I had this one, a funny story. I had this one waitress. I was sitting in there. And I had bought a donut. I was sitting there because I love donuts. And I was just sitting there drinking a cup of coffee and eating this donut. She uh, she looked at me and she goes, hey, what? She walks away, comes back, hands me another donut. I was like, oh. I said, well, okay. And I said, well. And she goes, nah, don't worry about it. Just don't tell nobody. I'm like, all right, fair enough. Well, I ate those two. And um, <laughs> the, the, the pot, you know. Back then, they kept the pies and the clear cylindrical things on the on the bar in front of you. And I was looking at that, and I said, man, I tell you what, I'm about to get a piece of that apple pie sitting there. That looks awful good. Well, she opens up the case. She goes, you want this one right here? And I was like, yeah. She goes, this one right here. About that time, she stuck her finger right in the middle of the piece of pie. And I said, yeah. She goes, oh. Look, I done stuck my finger in it. I guess I'll have to give you that one for free. She just slides me a piece of pie. And I was sitting there like, oh, no. And, uh, yeah, dude, I ate so much food there. And it was just, they find ways to figure out a way to give it to me for free. And it was like, don't worry about it. I thought, man, I got money. I'm sitting in there. I probably had $500 in my pocket. I was like, I got money. I, it ain't the problem. Oh no, it's fine. We just, you know, it's fine. Well, heck, I sit down here so much, got to know the people, and I thought, well, you give me free food, I'll sit down here and eat. I'm like a stray cat. You give me food, I don't go away. You know. <laughs> I, I tell you what was my downfall was uh, I was 24 years old. I, I, I weighed maybe 145 pounds, and I worked at a hospital. And the old lady that worked in the cafeteria in the mornings, they they come back here, come back here, and they feed me. All the southern mm -hmm. food I've never had before. Fried oh. bologna, salmon cakes, yeah. biscuits mm -hmm. and gravy, deep yep. fried bacon. And mm -hmm. now I weigh 224 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I fully understand. Um, I went from about a buck 67 and now I'm about a buck 90. And I, you know, I've always, I've always been a between 167 to 173. I was always able to manage that. And I tell you, within the last, well, almost 20 years now, I, I just accepted. Look, I'm, at, I'm getting older. I got my dad bod going on. Um, yeah. A few extra pounds. It's fine. It, it's yeah. fine. I'm resigned to the fact that I just rather enjoy myself at this point. So I'm not gonna fight it. Give me another cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always make fun of, and tell, like, my mom and dad and uh, others. And I said, well, I'm stockpiling a little extra weight just in case. And they're like, just in case what? I said, well, you don't know. I said, yeah, you know, I get trapped out somewhere. I might have to burn a little. And I said, you never know. I get sick. I, I, I want a little extra. I want a little extra burnable weight, you know, just in case, you know. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I might need that someday. You know, I might need that extra 10 pounds someday. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. So, what got you into what what got you into the black top uh, flat top grill or the Blackstone? Uh, so, that thing, uh, man. I was at work one day and a coworker's like, "Hey, I've got this thing. It's a little rusty. Do you want it?" Like, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So he brings it in and throw it in the back of my truck and I get it home and I look at it and 
I'm like, the angle grinder will fix this. So <laughs> the angle grinder out, buzzed it across, seasoned it. And it was just like when I used to work at a, a little cheesesteak restaurant. I was like, holy crap, oh. I can cook cheesesteaks on this now. And I think that was <laughs> the, one of the first things I cooked on it. So you kind of just having that space to work and, and as we called it back in the day, slinging the meat. I'm like, mm -hmm. God, if I could recommend any cooking gadget or tool to anybody, it, it's a big griddle. Nice. Well, I, I know me and the wife have talked about doing and if uh, we get a little more money, we want to build an outdoor kitchen, just a legit water the whole bit outdoor kitchen. Nice. And I told her, I said, if I, if we do, I I either want something like what you got, the big flat top, or the um, they got one called the Evo, and it's the round kind of flat top, but it's a round one. And and they're so versatile because you can you know smash burgers, cheese steaks, throw a T-bone T-bone on it, um, yeah. breakfast omelets, hash browns, bacon, yeah. um, bacon on the flat tops, one of the best things on the whole planet. So. Oh yeah. I bet stir fry, you know, quesadillas, Peruvian food. It, yeah, man, flat top. You gotta get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Since since watching you over all this time and, and what you've done with yours, I, I do occasionally angle. I get jealous of it. Like, man, I need one of them in my life right now. I do. Yeah, so right now, the problem is the wife loves the smash burger so much that. Mm. It gets on the, the, the weekly menu like every other week. So it's like all I ever cook on it anymore is cheesesteaks and smash burgers and probably that, 70 smash burgers. Nice. Hey, look, I've seen a few of them and you got that down to an art now. I'm telling you. That, it makes my arteries smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's like I said, it. <laughs> You're smashing all the bad out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're smashing all that fat, <laughs> cholesterol. And greasy and, and so good tasting. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And especially when, you know, when they're done right. Uh, you put that pile of onions down. Oh, yeah. You let them things cook up just a little bit and then smash that all into it. And it is brilliant. It, it it's really so counterintuitive because I grew up with uh, never smash your burger on the grill. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, you want me to take this gigantic weight and just obliterate this this meatball? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was always taught that you know you're you're squeezing all the juice and and yes. flavor out of it. Yeah. Nope. So juicy, so much flavor. And my yeah. wife is very health conscious about what she eats and and picky. She eats like a rabbit, and she will <laughs> devour a, a greasy smash burger like it's. Like it's the last meal. <laughs> yeah, if you you fixing them for you, you probably convert a vegan to eat one. Let me tell you, I've seen your burgers, boy. I know. So. I you, I'm tempted to try it with one of these meat substitutes just to to see what happens. Um, have you have you had that? Well, yeah, you have. You told me about that. I can't remember which one you had. Uh, Impossible Burger. Yeah. yeah, and I was surprised by it because I, I could I, I could tell a difference but I couldn't tell you definitively which one was meat and which one was not. So I'd be interested to see how that meat reacts to being smashed against a grill like a meat patty. With onions and all that involved, yeah. You know what? It's gonna, it's probably going to have to happen in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I was going to say I'll be looking forward to that when you do it. Uh, <laughs> just don't forget Burger Tribe. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I think I'm going to do it, but I might not tell my wife and see if she can tell the difference. There you go. Pull, pull the experiment and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just keep your poker face on. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst at that. <laughs> <laughs> keep that poker face, otherwise she's going to do something's up. So. As it sounds like, it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. I actually can't wait for this now. Ah, don't you hate that when when something happens like that and you think, well, now I got to do this, you know. Oh, yeah. Going back to the cheesesteaks, that is kind of what happened with me. Um, not something I actually eat a lot of. Uh, I do like one every now and then. 
and it's probably been a couple months or so ago. Uh, Robin Ho posted. Yes. I dem- yes, he tried to make one. And I was sitting there watching it going, and I had a cheesesteak. Wow. And then, you know, a couple of days goes by, and I'm sitting there going, I got to make a cheesesteak. <laughs> I'm making a cheesesteak. And then by the time I decided, yeah, I'm going to do this, it evolved again into what is the perfect ultimate cheese steak? And it's like, okay, well, there has to be steak. Um, You can't make this out of hamburger. Um, And then it's got to be a good steak. You can't just go out here and get a scoop steak and do it, you know. Then it's it's all about the cheese. It's all about the bread. And when you think about it, to me, that is the epitome. It's bread, meat, and cheese. If you have those three, it's like a good cake. A good cake don't need icing. The cake's good. Um, good steak doesn't need steak sauce. That a well, that's it right there. And you know, I get it. My if I go to a thing, I hate go to a steakhouse, and they ask you, "Do you want a one or steak sauce with that?" It's like, oh dear lord, is it that bad? You know? <laughs> And I gotta put that crap on it to cover it up. Please, if so, I'm just gonna leave now and find a better place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave now. Um, and I, I, I gotta say that was one of the things, you know, when I brought that up. And you know, I know you have a passion for cheesesteak. Yeah, yeah. You hit me up immediately as soon as I posted the okay, I gotta do this now. And it's not nothing simple like, well, I'm just going to make a cheesesteak, be happy with it. Now it's like this whole adventure. And, you know, uh, for people who don't know, John hit me up immediately. And he's like, okay, rules of cheesesteak and all this. And I'm like, oh, all right. You know, and then you just admitted uh, just a minute ago that you used to work in a little ste- cheesesteak shop. And uh, yeah, oh, okay, that comes full circle now. Yeah, ironically. It was in Alabama. <laughs> oh, really? I figured that would have been a Jersey thing right there. Right. No, so, yeah, through high school, I get my driver's license. My parents were like, awesome. I mean, I was probably the original Uber because my parents were like, go get a <laughs> <laughs> My dad was called in, and it was always the same place, and I'd pick up these cheesesteaks. It was always the same big Italian dude slinging the meat on the grill. And, I mean, as a kid – I actually had an enormous respect for what he was doing because it tasted so damn good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I, it became one of my most favorite foods. It's kind of tied, number one, with cheeseburgers. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. I do. Um, yeah, it, steaks and, and burgers. I, I Well, I should just say steaks. Look, I... I I'm a I'm a sucker for meat all the way around. You can give me a roasted chicken, fried pork chop, nice ribeye, A5 Wagyu. Well, there is something to be said about A5 Wagyu. But anyway, um, <laughs> any kind of meat. Protein makes me smile. Yeah, I, there's something about animal protein that is awful good. <laughs> we're, we're losing vegans by the numbers right now. Oh, no. but it's, it's, it's fine. But there's going to be some impossible burger in my future, so. Yeah, we're, we're trying to redeem ourselves somehow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I I, I challenge, um, let's see, who was it that uh, brought up something about I needed to try to do a, a vegan cheesesteak? And I thought, no. <laughs> how, 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 no. Um, you can't turn chickpeas into a cheesesteak. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm stuck in a reboot because I can't comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> There's a glitch in the matrix, man. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think Natalie might try it. I think uh, yeah. she's willing to do it. And I'm like, more power to you, but there is some things that can't be replicated. Yeah. And during the podcast with her, you know, that was one of the questions I even asked her was, uh, do you think there's anything that can't be 
replicated into vegan. And she's like, no, I can convert anything. I thought, uh, bet you can't. You know, um, cauliflower, is, is, cauliflower hot wings. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, first of all, I've never seen cauliflower have a wing. But anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> I have a lot of that. I ain't gonna lie. Um, here we go. We're gonna lose more vegans. Watch this. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. You know I love y'all, but that is one of the things that does does get some of us is you know like vegan wings. I've never seen plants fly. Um, I, I haven't. Uh, just like with coconut milk, I ain't never seen a coconut with a nutter. I I, I haven't. Um, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I've ne I've never seen a, a a big coconut nursing a baby coconut. I, I've never seen that in my life. Um, <laughs> I watched a lot of National Geographic, and I ain't never seen that one. Um, anyway, there is some things that I it does get under my skin. Um, it's like, no, just stop it. You got a vegan nugget. Uh, you know, call it what it is. Just call it what it is. Yeah. But on the flip side, it's kind of like thank you for driving that Prius because it gives me enough gas for my Mustang. Yeah, that's yep. that's cheesesteak meat for me. Yeah, right. You know, and that's like the people who get upset about oh, you know, we gotta stop eating these cows and sustainable, you know, livestock. You know, first of all, everything's sustainable. Stop it. Anyway. Um, you know, and all I can say is I'm doing my best. I'm eating them as fast as I can. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm eating chickens and cows and pigs as fast as I can, man. I'm trying. It's <laughs> I'm trying to do my part. You just keep more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and I'm telling you, and you know, I'm, all... like that. I'm doing my duty now. I'm, I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to save her. I took another burger. <laughs> I'm trying to save the environment. I'm eating steak. Okay. <laughs> you say cow flatulence is killing the planet. Well, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> That's almost a thousand pound critter. I can only eat so much in one night, man. I'm trying. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Yeah. And, you know, uh, thinking of that. Uh, since you've went to Georgia, um, I'm sure you probably don't get a lot of it in in Jersey. But it, now that you've been in Georgia for a while, have you tried a lot of like wild game meat? Uh, you know, it's funny moving down here. I had friends that it, first off, being from Jersey, I had never been hunting before in my life. And I had a friend of mine who, who it was one of his big passions, and he actually took me out hunting one day. And for five hours, I sat in a tree dressed in camouflage. <laughs> And I actually got so bored, I disassembled and reassembled my pew pew several times because <laughs> I didn't see a simple thing. <laughs> and I, my attention was just all over the place. But um, yeah, he was really good at, at harvesting deer. And uh, right. another thing uh, I never thought I would have eaten either was dove and and wild boar and. So mm. it, that was a treat. I haven't had it in a while. Occasionally, I get a friend bring some some venison in, but um, yeah, it, it's a whole different experience. Um, great flavors, though, if you are open to having those other flavors. Yeah. Um, now, dove is honestly something I'm not sure I've had. I'm not. I now I've had pheasant, and quail, and yeah. <laughs> I've had pheasant, quail, turkey. I've had all the others, duck. I've had all that, uh, goose. I've had all them, uh, and they're fantastic. But, you know, duck is something I'm not sure I've had. How about squirrel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I why I had to post it. that. <laughs> really? Yeah, um, I'm not close to it. Not 100% embracing the idea yet, but. Oh, I've ate my, oh, I've ate a lot of squirrels. Um, not recently, unfortunately. I. It seems like every time squirrel season comes in, which it's getting ready, it'll come in next month. And er, I got places I can go, and there's this other. They're a rodent. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I don't. I look. I won't eat insects, but I'm not necessarily against certain rodents. Um. <laughs> um. 
what we used to do is we used to go out kill a bunch of squirrels and you're allowed well i think back then you was allowed six or eight per person and you get enough people out and you you go out and you get your limits and stuff well we come back okay we're going to lose some more vegans here now okay anyway you take a pair of side cuts well the peel of squirrel is real simple um and we would cut the back legs off of it and cut from the knee down off and it looks like a little chicken wing i mean little chicken wing and we would fry them up just like chicken wings and then we would take the rest of the the uh meat that was left leave it on the bone and you would cook it up like little mini roasts you throw it in let it all just cooked where it just gravied itself up, mix it up, put some potatoes and stuff or something with it, just sit and eat. Uh, but a chicken wing, uh, <laughs> I'll be on chicken wings now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, uh, squirrel legs taste actually kind of beefish. Um, it, it's interesting. It's, it's not as gamey as you think. And yeah, we used to just sit and tear them things up and me and a friend, well, he was my neighbor, a friend of mine, we used to go squirrel hunting and we'd sit and process them all sitting on his uh, back porch and cook them all up and sit out there and eat, <laughs> and eat them. And in the morning, it just looked like Jonestown for squirrels, man. It just, you get up and there was squirrel hide and bones everywhere. It was just... <laughs> Not only are you finding a picture for our vegan friends, but some of our international friends are probably like those damn Americans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have no limits, do they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, well, I I had that discussion actually with a uh, few of them. One of them actually being Booty V. And I said, you know, well, and, and Natalie both, I believe. And I said, you know, I can't help it. And they was, uh, Natalie was talking about, well, anybody can go vegan. It's just if you want to, you, you dedicate yourself to it. And I said, no, I couldn't. I have hunted and fished and stuff my whole life. And so taking animals, processing animals and eating animals, is just, it's so ingrained into my DNA now. Um, my grandpa raised chickens. It was not uncommon. You not only went out and got the eggs out of the coop, but if you wanted chicken that night, you, you snatched the chicken on your way out. You know what? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know, growing up in New Jersey, I was uh, I was really separated from hunting. That experience. And my one time out hunting, it was a big bust. But getting into food and kind of buying larger cuts of meat and butchering meat. It was a, a little, there was a little bit of a hesitation at first because, mm -hmm. you know, I used to go to the store and buy the cut of meat and it was already shaped like a steak and then all I had to do was cook it. So now, you know, getting into barbecue and actually carving up meat and stuff, it's, mm -hmm. at first it's a little different, but I tell you what, you get that, a little bit more feeling of accomplishment at the end when you know what you started with and how it comes out at the end and it, it, that's part of a rewarding experience there. It is. It, it is. Until you've done it, you you don't you don't truly get it. Um, I was telling. Well, me and Booty was talking, Susie, and I told her. I said, you know, a lot of people think you go in the woods and you just shoot whatever walks out in front of you, and that's not the case. Uh, I was raised that, you know, I look at the animal and say, okay. That one needs to live so that way next year, there again, that sustainable thing. Yeah. And say, that's the one that needs to live so next year we have this ability again and keep this herd alive, you know. Or you look at the one and say, you know what, that one needs to be knocked out because either it's old or, you know, somehow it's just genetically you can tell. And I get to where now, you know, people, I, it's bad because like I'll be in a car with people and they'll, hey, look, a deer and oh, it's beautiful and all this. And all I can think of is I look at muscle structure, muscle density. I try to look at age, I, how old it is by looking at it. And 
I can't take that out. I, I've done it for 47 years and I can't not do that, you know. And so when I look at an animal, I I can tell you if it's a good food source. And uh, it was funny, a uh, little backstory. When I married my wife, she had no idea of any of that. She nothing. She was, you know, her family weren't hunters. They they didn't do anything. Now her mom was a fit. We go fishing and stuff. So she kind of knew how to do fish, but as far as um, actual, you know, fuzzy critters, she had no idea. And I'll never forget, we we hadn't been buried very long, and it was hunting season, and a friend said, hey, man, I just knocked one down, uh, and I can't get to it. Do you want it? And I said, sure. So me and my dad jumped in the truck, went and got it. She was still at work. She come home. <laughs> okay here's where we lose a couple more she comes in and on the dining room table was a rib cage to a white tail and i'm slicing the meat off of the ribs i got leg bones over here on the kitchen counter where i done strip bars she must <laughs> thought you were hannibal lecter and i told her i said the rest of it's out on the porch and trash bags i'm trying to get to it as quick as i can <laughs> and she just looked at me like what are you doing? You know, <laughs> I was like, 